you get a text from your mom. She's going to pick you and your friend up after school and take you to the movies. Your friend is a few rows away, but their phone is dead. How do you get your friend this message without disrupting class? You pass them a note, of course. The messages passed in this scenario are very similar to the messages the cells in your body use to communicate and coordinate their actions. All of the messages your body sends must go through signal transduction pathways, much like passing a note to your friend. However, the signal transduction pathways your body uses are much more complicated. Plus, signal transduction pathway concepts will definitely be on the AP test. So, stick with us as we cover everything you need to know about signal transduction pathways. This video covers section 4.3 of the AP Biology curriculum. We'll start by reviewing the basics of signal transduction pathways that we covered in the first section. Then, we'll dive right into some of the complex examples. First, we'll review the wind signaling pathway that helps control how cells differentiate into different types. After the first quiz, we'll also take a look at the receptor tyrosine kinase pathway that is responsible for transducing the signal from many different types of signal molecules. Finally, we'll see how the stress hormone cortisol can activate a pathway that can literally change the genes your cells express. If you only need to review one of these pathways, feel free to skip forward to the times outlined here. Otherwise, let's get started. Before we dive into some truly complex signal transduction pathways, let's do a quick review of some terminology and motifs we will be seeing. If you need further review of these terms or topics, be sure to watch our video on section 4.2, Introduction to Signal Transduction. All signal transduction pathways start with the reception of a signal. This signal can be a ligand, or it can be a physical signal from the environment such as a light ray, a sound wave, or even physical touch. Regardless of the signal, the reception of the signal creates a conformational change within the receptor protein. This can lead to a wide variety of reactions within the cytoplasm, a process known as signal transduction. Most commonly, this conformational change activates another enzyme. In a few cases, this enzyme carries out a single action that results in a cellular response. However, it is much more common for this enzyme to activate a number of secondary messenger molecules, like cyclic AMP. Oftentimes, these molecules pass phosphate groups to other enzymes in a phosphorylation cascade that ultimately leads to the activation of thousands of proteins and enzymes throughout the cell. The important thing to remember here is that there is an almost infinite amount of variation when it comes to signal transduction pathways. Though we will cover a few specific examples in the following slides, the AP test may ask you about a completely different pathway. In these cases, look for the common elements of the signal transduction pathway presented and you should be able to answer the question. Think about this. Scientists have calculated that it should only take about 300 genes to produce all of the necessary aspects of a bacterial cell. However, when scientists measured actual bacterial cells, they find way more than 300 genes. In fact, some of the simplest bacteria like E. coli have somewhere around 3,000 genes. So, what do the extra 2,700 genes do? Scientists have tracked many of these genes to functions within the signal transduction pathways that allow these bacterial cells to quickly respond to their environment. As we start to go through some of these pathways, try to remember that cells have literally thousands of these pathways. Don't try to memorize every detail of these pathways. Simply look for the bigger themes and commonalities that will help you on the test. One pathway that has been conserved across the entire animal kingdom is the WINT pathway. The name WINT is a combination of wingless, a gene mutant first identified in fruit flies, and integrated, a homolog gene found in other animals. Since these genes both produce the same glycoprotein signal molecule, this molecule was named WINT. Let's start by taking a look at what happens before a WINT signal molecule is received. Without getting too much into the weeds, beta-catenin is a molecule that can activate gene expression. A group of proteins within the cytosol breaks down beta-catenin. This group of proteins is known as the beta-catenin destruction complex. As long as this complex is in place, 
beta-catenin gets broken down and cannot activate any genes. Enter the Wnt signal molecule. Most often released by various cells during embryogenesis and organism development, these molecules bind to a, re a receptor protein known as frizzled. The conformational change induced in the frizzled receptor protein causes the disheveled protein and axon protein to bind to the receptor, breaking apart the beta-catenin destruction complex. Since it is no longer being destroyed, beta-catenin can enter the nucleus and activate certain genes. However, this is simply one of many pathways that can be activated by a Wnt signal molecule. For instance, a Wnt signal molecule can also modulate the level of glucose uptake caused by an insulin signal. It is thought that the Wnt signal pathway may be part of the reason people develop insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes. Now that we've reviewed the basics of signal transduction and saw how those basics can get very complicated, let's see how much you picked up. Pause the video now and take this short quiz. You can find answers to these questions through the quick test prep link in this video's description. Let's consider another common pathway, the RTK pathway, known for the receptor molecules that power it. Though there are literally dozens of different kinds of receptor tyrosine kinase proteins that respond to different growth factors and hormones, they all operate in a similar manner to start a signal transduction pathway. These RTK proteins typically sit individually on the cell membrane, but when a growth factor or other signal molecule binds to their extracellular receptor domain, two RTK proteins come together in a process known as dimerization. During this process, the two RTK proteins come together. The tyrosine kinase domain of the proteins do what its name implies. It phosphorylates tyrosine amino acids in the tail regions of each protein. In turn, these phosphorylated tyrosines can pass the phosphate groups to a large number of other proteins in a phosphorylation signaling cascade. For example, the JAK-STAT pathway proceeds as follows. The JAK proteins are associated with the RTK receptor proteins. When dimerization occurs after a signal has been received, the JAK proteins are the first to be phosphorylated. The JAK proteins pass the phosphate groups onto STAT proteins, which can then combine into complexes that activate the transcription of various genes within the nucleus. While the JAK-STAT pathway is just one of many pathways activated by RKT proteins and their respective signal molecules, it does show how complex patterns and phosphorylation cascades are sometimes involved. If you feel like the signaling transduction pathways that we've been talking about are getting too complex, you're not wrong. Now is a good time to take a break, grab a snack, and stretch your legs. When we come back, we'll look at one final signal transduction pathway, the cortisol pathway. If we take a look at the cortisol signaling pathway, you'll notice something interesting. The receptors for cortisol actually exist in the cytosol instead of on the cell membrane. However, since cortisol is a lipid-based steroid hormone, it can easily pass through the cell membrane. This is true of other lipid-based hormones and their receptor proteins. After cortisol binds to its receptor protein, the entire protein and cortisol complex enters the nucleus and starts the process of transcribing certain genes. This makes the cortisol signaling pathway one of the simplest we have covered. The really cool thing about the cortisol pathway is the massive variability in responses it causes in different cell types. Consider this. Cortisol is known as the stress hormone, and it is typically released in times of crisis. This one hormone is produced by the adrenal gland when they receive hormone signals from other parts of the brain. Cortisol is released in large quantities into the bloodstream during stressful events and causes many diverse effects in different tissues. For instance, when cortisol hits cells in the liver, it causes gluconeogenesis, a process that creates new glucose molecules and sends them into the bloodstream. This gives a stressed organism the energy it needs to keep fighting. It causes the muscles to stop taking in amino acids so that amino acids can be used for energy as well. If cortisol levels remain high for a long period of time, 
it may cause the cells to undergo programmed death, known as apoptosis. This gives the organism energy from the breakdown of proteins, but it also leads to a weakened state. Cortisol can also weaken your immune system so that you don't have to deal with inflammation while you're stressed. However, this also means that you can get sick more easily if you have high levels of cortisol in your system for a long period of time. Like many hormones, cortisol is great in the right amount and devastating if you get too much of it. Now that we've covered a few more signal transduction pathways and cellular responses, let's see if you can answer some AP style questions. Pause the video now and take this short quiz. You can find answers to these questions through the quick test prep link in this video's description. Be sure to check out the other links to find all of our AP Biology study resources. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful and informative. Leave us any comments or questions you still have about signal transduction pathways. Be sure to subscribe to the Biology Dictionary YouTube channel to get access to all of our AP Biology videos and resources. Good luck.